In this video, we're going to see how to create a user in PHP MyAdmin. I'm simply going to click on the Users tab, and I'm going to click Add User. Uh, username, we're going to say JonesBR, which is my Bearcat ID. Host, we'll leave it wildcard. We can restrict the connections that come into the server, to this database server, to specific IPs, or we can leave the host at the wildcard, which is the percent symbol, which means we're not restricting the IP that the user is using to access this. Password, I'll use my super secret, super secure Snoopy 14. We'll come back and use that later. Uh, retype again, S-N-O-O, oops, S-N-O-O-P-Y-1-4. And um, we'll say global privileges. We'll simply check all. And scroll down and choose create. You see, we can limit things like max queries per hour, updates, connections, user connections, so on and so forth. But in this case, the database is running locally on my virtual machine. I'm the only one who has access to it. So I'm not concerned about limiting that. So you see, with this now, uh, we've created the user Jones BR, password protected, no IP restrictions, all privileges. Uh, everything looks good. Now, one consideration, what if you don't find the user tab? I'm going to take a look at a different PHP MyAdmin window that I have here. I don't see the user tab here because in this case, I'm logged in with a user who does not have permission uh, to create new users or administer users. As a matter of fact, if I try a simple um, create user here, we're going to see it's going to come back and tell me I don't have permission access tonight. So if you don't see that uh, users tab, that means that you don't have significant privileges to create a user. But in this case, on our local MySQL database, we do have that permission. We have created the user, and now we're ready to use that user in an application. Now, I did a few adjustments with the video paused. I kept my Jones BR and then wildcard host, uh, verified the password, gave it all privileges, and I also made a Jones BR specifically for the local host IP. Again, uh, password, the same Snoopy 14, and all privileges. In other words, I ticked the box and chose OK. So it gets all privileges on the database. In reality, I want this user to have fewer privileges than root. This should just be a read-only user, so or a read-write user, but someone who can't actually modify the database. So I should eventually go in and tweak those privileges. I should probably also make things like a read-only user, um, an administrative user, things like that. So we don't want to give the user too much access to our database, even, even users who might work for us on the same project. Uh, honestly, unless I really need it personally, I usually try to not get write access to any database that I use. Just because if something gets deleted by mistake, if I don't even have access to do that delete, then that kind of takes me, uh, puts me on the innocent list. So we want to take advantage of these users in MySQL. Let me show you what we need to do to modify our Hibernate file now. I'm in Hibernate CFG. Uh, first thing, I'm going to take the property, change it to Jones BR, which is the username, and I am going to enable this property name equals uh, hibernate connection password because remember this Jones BR has a password and we definitely should consider giving our root user a password as well. I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to compile redeploy and then we'll just verify that this still works as it did when we had root user. And now with it redeployed, uh, let's take a look. I'm going to go to add plant and I'm going to say, uh, we'll say Liriodendron Tulipiferia. I'm sure that one was right on the tip of your tongue as well. And this is the tulip tree. A very pretty tree in this area. And I will choose submit. Okay. Uh, it will likely hit the will likely hit the debugger again. Let's just verify that we have that. Okay. And sure enough, our debugger comes up. I'm going to press play through this. Now, here's a note. If you have trouble connecting to Hibernate, I strongly recommend that you snap a breakpoint where I have mine, which is this Hibernate you tell Git Session Factory open session. If you have an error, you will likely see some information in the console 
It's also, of course, a good idea to add log statements, which I haven't done here, but I will do, I promise. But if you're having issues, it's a good idea to step over this. I'm going to go ahead and step over, because if it throws an exception that gets caught, you'll look at the exception, and the exception is usually a uh, usually good indication of what's wrong. If your host is incorrect, if your username is incorrect, or if for some reason your user doesn't have privileges, you will get that in the exception. So right now I've told it to execute this line and it does take a moment to walk through that initialization of Hibernate, which is what we're waiting on now. But because we set up that Hibernate util as a static class, once it's initialized, we're good from then on until we restart the application again. So this little hit that we see here, this slowness that you'll see the first time, uh, is only the first time. After this, it's gonna go a bit faster. And sure enough, the configuration is proper. We see session begin transaction. I step over that, step over the save, fingers crossed that it works, and the commit, and we'll press play, and now it's back uh, waiting for the next instruction from the user. Let's take a look, and of course you see again our confirmation came up. Let's take a look at our database and just confirm that we do have this plant. Okay, and sure enough, Liriodendron tulipiferia, uh, the tulip tree plant has properly been added. So in this video we've seen how to create a new user in uh, PHP MyAdmin for MySQL and we have seen how we can change that user in Hibernate so that we can make sure that we have only the privileges that are necessary for a user that's going to be writing information from a website. I hope that was helpful and we'll see you in the next video.